So hello, today I'm at St Lawrence's Church in Ashradham in Essex and I'd like to talk to you about the history of the village and the church itself. So Ashradham is a village in Essex, it's 9 miles from Malden and it's 16 miles from Chelmsford. It's set in the centre of the Denji Peninsula which is surrounded by the Blackwater and Crouch estuaries to the north and south and the North Sea is to the east. Now Ashildham is a rural setting, very rural, with a population of 140 and it's 21 metres above sea level. Ashildham's history goes back a long long way indeed, it's quite incredible. The Neolithic man and woman would have hunted here such animals as sabre-toothed tiger and a porcupine around 7,000 500 BC. Now in the Bronze and Iron Age is we had settlements which were here and they were 600 yards from here we had the remains so just up there we had the remains of Ashildon Camp which is a fortified mound from the early Iron Age period the irregular shape has been obscured by gravel mining over the decades. In 1963 Saxon pottery was unearthed and the camp ditch measured 3.6 metres deep and 3.5 metres wide and during the Saxon period a major recut of the ditch took place and Middle Saxon pottery dating from 7th to the 9th century were, were discovered. Now interestingly, in 1893, a Viking knife and axe was found here, which now resides in the Colchester Museum. Now Ashledham in 1066 was owned by Godric, who was Lord of the Manor here. He had two small holders, he had cattle, pigs and goats, and five acres of meadow. Also there was a second manor house here, and that, exist, and that was owned by a free man. And he also had two small holders and five acres of land. Now after the conquest, 10, 1066, we move on to 1086. The doomsday and Ashildham changed hands to the Normans. We have Swine of Essex who was a powerful character at the time and he was tenant in chief of both manors and we had men called Ralph and Warner and they became lords of both these manors and in fact when I researched the village in a book called The King's England of Essex. It stated there was a second ancient camp of 16 acres of the ancient Britons. And this church itself was within its ramparts along with the hall and pond. Now in 2011, Cambridge University published excavations from this church and churchyard and they revealed a complex series of building phases. There was domestic occupation in the middle to the late Saxon period, followed by a timber building interpreted as a church. So we can definitely say there would have been a Saxon church here. Also it had associated graves from that time. And this road here that we started on is actually an original Roman road and they discovered there's a field system here from that time which does which still survives throughout the Denji Peninsula. Now they also found that a priest house was built and altered in the 12th and 13th century and that was northwest so basically just where those trees are. 
So it's literally northwest of the cemetery. And this would have been the original vicarage. It would have been two rooms constructed of timber with a gravel floor. Now the church itself, what we're looking at now, the whole church, including the nave, the chancel and the west tower, were rebuilt in the 14th century, the early 14th century. Basically this church is built of septarius stone and flint with lime dressings. It's got Roman brick in places. If we look at this tower, this tower was built for fortification purposes. The walls are incredibly thick and originally it just had the arrow slit windows. That window in front of us is 14th century, totally original. We go round to the north side. Now that is what is called a small loop window in Roman brick. Now inside, there's the bell chamber. And on each corner, or each side, you've got the original tree forward light windows. If you look down here, you can see one of the old marks. And you can see how they've utilised the local flint in the fields. Now we're going to look at the nave. Sadly we can't go in. So the nave is in front of us now. It measures 38 by 18 feet. Behind that fairly modern porch there is a 14th century doorway. Now we're going to move on to the chancel, which is here. This is 19 foot by 17 foot. That doorway is the original 14th century priest door. And if you look, you have two heads, stone heads, which are weathered. And this would have originally been the monarch at the time, whoever the king was. And this one would have been a monk. And you can see, still got detail of the stone jams either side. And there you have the original window. The tracery is perished, but still gives an idea of the beauty of it. Now, The Victorians themselves, they heavily restored this church in 1866 to 1867 and you can see they've put their touch on this side with their brick and a modern east window or Victorian. Now today this church is a grade 2 listed building, that's the status of it. And the, the church was classed as redundant in 1973. Now 
Now in 1975, Asheldham Youth Church was established by Chelmsford Diocese, Diocese and they also established St. Said Sailing Club at Bradwell on Sea and pilgrimages to St. Peter's on the Wall Chapel. Now in 1989, extensively, uh, extensive restoration, modernisation of his church took place. And then what happened was Asheldham Centre, so it took over, its na the name changed. <clears throat> and it's still part of the Diocese of Chelmsford. Now it's a base for the development through leisure activities. For the youth, uh, it's got physical, mental and spiritual growth for the youth from all over Essex, London and England. So the church is, though it's not a place of worship, it's still being used, which is a good thing. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much.